in this session let us do induced voltage equation and let us try to solve problems of alternator under no load conditions once the alternator is loaded then rotor uh, sorry armature currents will flow after that armature reaction will come after that like you know uh, analysis will be separate okay so in this session let me solve some problems in the no load conditions for example you know transformer equation right i don't want to specially derive equations because it is the machine simplified so equation induced voltage equal to in our transformer root 2 pi f pi max n okay in this it has to be changed to induced voltage in case of generator eg is nothing but same root 2 pi f it is not pi max but it is going to be pi average pi average and n s e okay means n s e is nothing but series connected number of turns okay and the my induced voltage should be reduced because of short pitching angle and again induced voltage should be reduced because of distribution of the winding so it will be kp kd winding factor okay about nse let me tell you one thing see for example if i have four pole machine okay for example four pole machine a dash a dash because in four pole machine heteropolar structure okay here under n pole if a is there under s pole a dash should be there full pitch coils under n pole again a will be there under s pole again a dash should come so my induced voltage having two parallel paths sorry two paths it's not parallel two paths for example induced voltage okay so this is going to be a this is going to be a dash in you, here in the coil voltage will be induced here a here a dash induced voltage now these two induced voltages can be connected in parallel or can be connected in series for example a dash is connected with a if i connect like this okay how much will be the induced voltage here across the terminals for example induced voltage in the coil is e induced voltage in the coil is e so induced voltage here is going to be 2e okay now let me compare this with uh, dc generators in dc generators we have lap winding wave winding number of parallel paths and all okay but in practice most probably all the number of turns of a phase will be connected in series why because in your dc machine for example see here if i connect these two in two parallel paths then what will happen if this conductor is designed for 10 amperes for example this conductor is also a a dash conductor a a dash conductors if these conductors are designed for 10 amperes these conductors are designed for 10 amperes if i go with parallel connection what will happen parallel connection this 10 amperes plus this 10 amperes is going to be 20 amperes so my current capability will be 20 amperes okay now what about the voltage voltage is going to be e only voltage will be reduced current will be increased or if i connect these in series series if i connect these in series this e this e so it will be 2g if these conductors are uh, designed for 10 amperes if these conductors are designed for 10 amperes as they are connected in series output is going to be 10 amperes so in series connected connection voltage will be more currents will be less in parallel connection currents will be more and voltage will be less now this kind of discussion will happen most of the times in uh, dc generators but not here most of the times okay until and unless they specifically say in the question there will be no parallel pass Be why because my output voltage requirement is high how much is that around 11 kv okay so the moment like you know output voltage requirement is high this these two should be connected in series only so until and unless specified in the question we have to assume that all phase turns are connected in series all phase <coughs> a a dash is going to be one turn a a dash is going to be one turn so this turn and this turn should be connected in series in order to attain more voltage here okay now coming to the point let us take third question find the highest speeds and the corresponding number of poles for two different mechanically coupled alternators required to give frequencies of 15 and 42 h okay so here one prime mover is there okay so this prime mover is driving alternator one 
and it is also driving alternator 2 alternator 2 okay so these two are mechanically coupled these two are mechanically coupled and this alternator is supposed to give output frequencies of 15h and this alternator is supposed to give output frequencies of 42h but these two has to rotate in the same speed same speed why because these three are mechanically coupled two different generators are coupled coupled alternators so these two alternators are mechanical mechanically coupled so they will rotate at the same speed okay now see here what is speed actually n equal to 120 f by p n equal to 120 f by p so this generator has to produce 15 h this generator has to produce 42 h but both should rotate at the same speed so same speed in the sense that implies 120 into frequency 15 h divided by number of poles of 15 15 uh, what do you say h number of poles equal to at the same speed in the sense 120 into 42 divided by number of poles of 42 so number of poles of 42 divided by number of poles of 15 will give you 120 120 will get cancelled 42 by 15 okay so if i divide this it is going to be 14 by 5 because means it may come down to 2.8 or something like that but like you know number of poles cannot be points okay it cannot be fractions now 14 by 5 see here here is it possible to have 14 poles yes is it possible to have five poles no because it's going to be odd number so multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 will give you 28 poles divided by 10 poles okay so number of poles on 15 h generator is going to be 10 number of poles on 42 h generator is going to be 28 that's my point right now let us see like you know if it is that case what is the speed actually n equal to 120 f by p so n equal to 120 f is 15 h divided by number of poles of 15 is 10 or we can rewrite it as 120 into number of uh, frequency is going to be 42 divided by okay number of poles of 42 is going to be 28 it should come down to 180 rpm okay now how to say because highest speeds highest speeds okay so this 180 rpm if i rotate this definitely like you know it will give 15 h and it will give 42 h but how to say whether it is highest speed because very simple see here 5 into 2 this is the minimum number of poles this is the minimum number of poles okay so number of poles are minimum minimum means that speed should be maximum for example see here if I say multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, if I have 20 poles here, if I have 56 poles here, then also I can rotate uh, combination and I can get 15H and 42H are not yes. Okay. But number of poles are more means that number of poles are more means that speed will be reduced. So in this way, in this combination, minimum number of poles I'm considering, minimum number of poles in the sense maximum speeds I'm going to get, highest speeds we got okay let us see the next question before entering into next question only <clears throat> one thing we have to see hope like you know all of our uh, guys know that synchronous motor rotate at synchronous speed only constant speed for example what is synchronous speed 120 f by p if frequency is constant at 50 h 120 into 50 by number of poles is going to be synchronous speed okay so synchronous speed means my synchronous motor rotated synchronous speed only not more than that not less than that so we can use it in clocks okay so see here a 50 head synchronous clock is correct at 7 a.m okay it was operating uh, it was showing the correct time at 7 a.m and from 7 a.m to 1 p.m the average frequency is 49.95 and from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m., the average frequency is 49.9. What must be the average frequency for the remainder of the 24 hours in order that the clock be correct again at 7 a.m.? By how much is the clock incorrect at 6 p.m.? So, my clock was showing correct time at 7 o'clock. And from 7 o'clock, I was unable to produce 50 h because 120 f by p. 
if frequency is 50 hertz speed will be at synchronous speed and it will represent like you know proper time but i was unable to maintain frequency 120 f by p if frequency is reduced automatically synchronous speed will be reduced automatically my clock will go late delay okay now see here from 7 am to 1 pm from 7 am to 1 pm 1 pm how much is the frequency you are supplying 49.95 h 49.95 h how many hours you supplied like you know 7 am to 1 pm that is going to be 6 hours okay for 6 hours how many cycles you are unable to supply for example if you supply 49.95 cycles per second means that you are unable to supply 0 0.05 cycle per second so how many cycles you are you, my machine is going to lose in 6 hours like you know 0 0.05 cycles per second so 0 0.05 cycles per second okay per second multiply by how many seconds 60 seconds in a minute how many minutes in an hour 60 how many hours 6 hours these are going to be cycles last okay now if you see from 1 pm to 6 pm i was able to supply only 49.9 h so like this how many hours 6 pm to 1 pm is going to be 5 hours okay so how many cycles i was unable to supply in 5 hours per, per second 0.1 h sorry 0.1 cycle 0.1 cycle per second into 60 seconds per minute into 60 minutes per hour into 5 hours okay so total how many cycles last this plus this okay so this plus this is going to be 28 80 cycles okay so these many cycles i was unable to supply from 7 am to 6 pm now from 6 pm to next day morning 7 am if i can supply extra these many cycles by 7 am synchronous clock will show correct time okay so means these many cycles should be supplied extra in how many hours 6 pm to 7 am okay in order that the clock be correct again at 7 am so 6 pm to 7 am how many hours are there 13 hours are there in 13 hours how many cycles extra i have to supply 2880 cycles means that what is the frequency extra that has to be supplied delta f equal to 2880 cycles divided by for 13 hours per hour 60 minutes per minute 60 seconds okay is going to give you 0 0.0615 okay so extra frequencies that has to be supplied so for 13 hours what is the frequency you are supposed to supply 50.0615 h okay so if you can supply this much frequency 50 h in order to rotate the clock at uh, right time and plus this because those many cycles are lost okay now next thing is by how much is the clock incorrect at 7 a.m now let us think of dimensions okay so from dimension point of view cycles by cycles per second will give you seconds so how many cycles you lost 2880 cycles divided by 50 if you maintain if you maintain 50 it would show correct time so 50 cycles per second 2880 cycles divided by 50 cycles per second will give you seconds so how many cycles delay is happening by 6 pm is going to be 2880 by 50 is going to be 57.6 seconds okay let us uh, take other questions